There are more than 120 statutes that grant the president emergency authority upon the president's declaration of emergency. For example, under 50 U.S.C. Section 1515, the president has power during any national emergency to suspend limitations on testing biological or chemical weapons on people. The International Emergency Economic Powers Act gives the president expansive power to regulate or prohibit a wide range of financial transactions if any foreign national has an interest in those transactions. Section 706C of the 1934 Communications Act empowers the president to shut down or commandeer any radio station during a national emergency. Contrary to popular belief, the National Emergencies Act, the NEA, does not grant the president any substantive powers to act during an emergency. All of the president's statutory emergency powers come from other statutes, not the NEA. The NEA was a congressional attempt to constrain, not expand, the president's exercise of emergency power. When Congress passed the National Emergencies Act in 1976, it did not affirmatively grant the president any emergency authority. Instead, Congress was attempting to formalize and impose additional procedural requirements on the president's declarations of national emergency. At that time, many existing statutes allowed the president to declare a national emergency to trigger expanded emergency powers. All of these powers are constrained primarily by norms, public opinion, and the threat of congressional oversight in extreme cases. Often these emergency declarations were open-ended with no specified end date. Consequently, some of them remained in effect for decades. For example, President Truman's 1950 Korean War proclamation of national emergency was still in place when the NEA was enacted more than 25 years later. Given the breadth of emergency powers delegated to the president by various statutes, Congress was concerned that the existence of ongoing indefinite emergencies gave the president, in the words of a 1973 Senate report, enough authority to rule the country without reference to normal constitutional process. The NEA terminated all of these existing emergency declarations. Additionally, it established a framework for future declarations of a national emergency and procedures the president must follow. The NEA dictated that emergency powers granted to the president in the event of a national emergency could only be exercised after an official emergency declaration pursuant to the NEA. To declare a national emergency, the president must specify which statutory powers he or she intends to invoke. Thus, for example, when President Trump declared the COVID-19 emergency, he specified that the Secretary of HHS could exercise authority under Section 1135 of the Social Security Act to temporarily waive certain Medicaid and Medicare requirements. Importantly, the NEA itself does not contain any definition of what constitutes a national emergency. While courts would likely be hesitant in any event to review a presidential determination of emergency, the lack of a definition would make judicial review of that determination all but impossible, unless one of the other statutes the declaration invokes contains a definition. Consequently, in many circumstances, judicial review is unlikely to provide an effective check on presidential exercise of emergency authority. Additionally, the NEA also does not require that the statutory powers invoked be related to or germane to the type of emergency declared. The NEA does, however, establish rules for terminating future emergencies. All emergency declarations expire in one year unless the president renews them. Additionally, a president can terminate any emergency by presidential declaration. The NEA also gave Congress new power to unilaterally terminate a presidential emergency declaration, but that oversight mechanism was invalidated by the Supreme Court's 1983 decision in INS versus Chadha. Thus, today, Congress can only terminate an emergency declaration over the president's objection if it has the votes to override a veto. Given that we are now back to a place in which we have many open-ended emergencies that last for years, if not decades, the time may be ripe for re-examining the scope of the emergency powers Congress has delegated to the president.